Eric Ten Hag's future as Manchester United manager is still plastered over the back pages today. Uh, Thomas Tuchel had been heavily linked with the role in recent days, but then after a meeting with Sir Jim Ratcliffe, he's apparently ruled himself out of the running. Uh, Ratcliffe met with Tuchel last Tuesday. Uh, it's reported that his managerial search will reach a conclusion this week. Yeah, I think we've heard that before. The, the longer it goes on, though, Andy, the more it seems to me anyway that it looks increasingly like that Eric Ten Hag will stay. Yes. But I but I that. just wonder how undermined he will have been by the whole process in inverted commas. Well, I, I, again, I think he's... I, I felt going into the cup final, there was... There was a lot of talk going into the cup final that he was going to going to lose his position as soon as the season ended, as soon as that game was over and done with. Um, that would have been uh, difficult for him to handle. He set the team up brilliantly in the cup final. They was they were excellent on the day, fully deserved it. Um, and then since then, it's been a case of all we've read about is whether it's Tuchel, whether it's Poch, whether it's someone else or whatever that's 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 apparently going to be getting his job. Very difficult for him to sit there. From a distance, I know that immediately he went away on holiday. Whether he's still there or not, we don't know. Um, but difficult for him to sit there and see all this, hear all this, and without seemingly the club absolutely stating their position. Now, there will be people out there that say the club don't need to state their position, that he's their manager, and until anything else is said, that's the way it's going to be. Um, but come on, I think when your manager is in charge at a club like Man United, and when various names are being banded around, I think it's only right and proper that the guy that you are currently employing knows that. And 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 I don't like, and I don't think it's right the way that this has all been handled. I think by now, Eric Ten Hag deserves, deserves to know whether or not he's going to be there or he's not. Uh, let's get all the letters from the Guardian's Manchester football correspondent, Jamie Jackson. Morning, Jamie. Good morning, gents. How are you doing, Jamie? I'm very good, thank you. Good. I tell you what, this has filled a few column inches for you over the weeks, hasn't it? Um, do you think that Ineos are any closer to appointing a manager now than when they first turned up at the club? Uh, I hope so. I mean, I don't know. Is it? Is it? Has it become a farce yet? I, I'd suggest it's getting close to a, a farce. Um, I mean, it, you know, I'm obviously listening to what you, what you're talking about here. If you're Eric Ten Hag, and in the end they sort of indicate to him however that might be that you know it, oh yeah we'd like you to stay if you're him do you do you do you feel like you can stay because I think Andy there mentioned the word undermine or maybe you did Jeff and you just wonder what what, what he's thinking now that that might be a, a case of pride I can see him turn around and say yeah okay I'll, I'll stay on because you, you definitely use the right word there Andy dignity he, he he has been dignified um and he may just look at it and think well you know I won the FA Cup uh, I won the Carabao Cup for my first season. They've, they've been all around the house. It's okay. It's not. I mean, at the moment, it makes Ineos not look great. I'd suggest. And Eric Ten Hag's not said a word. He's gone away on holiday. I, I think he may well be back now. And he, you know, he, he's sort of still acting with sort of classy. He, he always acts with in press conferences after games, etc. But it is a little bit long-winded. I'd suggest. Uh, now we're now into a third week. It's being reported that the hope is. You know that there'll be a decision, some sort of resolution this week. I mean, I was told it was going to be sort of finished by a Friday of last week, and that that never happened. Uh, or, or if it, or if it has finished, let's put it this way: is you know the conclusion has not emerged. I mean, there is a possibility that they've, they've reached a, a decision, right? And it just hasn't, as Andy's indicated, been, been announced publicly because why they feel you know they don't need to. But the point is, we're here talking about it, and. Yes, transfers. Let, let's get into something that actually really matter. If you're a player wanting to go to Manchester United, you mm. need to know who the manager is and how that manager sees you fitting into the team. I mean, that's that's the person you're going to be playing for, right? Mm -hmm. Now, again, those conversations could still be going on in the background, but it all feels a little bit state of flux. And, you know, this is a club that's been in a state of flux basically since the ownership was up for, up for grabs. You know, the Glazers put the, the club up for sale or potential sale, the World Cup of, in, in Qatar, it was, what's that, a year and a half, nearly two years ago. And here we are still in a state of, look, the chief executive, Omar Barad has yet to come in. Dan Ashworth, the sporting director, is yet to come in and start work. That's a state of flux. The two top executives, you know, who are going to drive transfers and everything else, the structure that has been lacking, are not yet in place. And then you've got the manager situation we're talking about, it's not great, is it? No, no, it's not great. It's it it, it isn't great. I, I, it's very very difficult. I think what the 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 situation that the club have found themselves in, 
Um, and I just would have expected, I think when when Ineos took over, there was this kind of sigh of relief, I'm sure, on behalf of all the United fans. They felt, right, there are now people in charge. They've got people in places who are going to make the big calls and make them pretty quickly. When you think of how we've, over the years, Jamie, we we sort of always... The way Abramovich, someone like him at Chelsea used to work, where he'd get rid of a manager in a heartbeat. Never mind never mind all these internal investigations to analyse the footballing department before you come to a decision. Um, you can analyse things till you're blue in the face. Someone somewhere has got to turn around and think, look, Eric, is he the guy we want to go with? And there's a gut feeling, and, the, and yes or no. And you back that up with what you witnessed over the last 10 months. Yes, he's won a couple of trophies, but is the type of football, is the brand, is this the way we want to move forward? And I don't see what all the analysing is about. I don't get it. Yeah, 100%. I mean, basically what you just said there, Andy, could have been decided, you know, before the end of the season, right, do we want this gentleman? If not, who is the new gentleman we want to come in and be the manager? Let's go and get that person. I don't... You're completely right. I mean, yeah, OK, maybe they wanted to see about the FA Cup uh, final, but he wins that. So if that was one of your sort of big indicators, well, maybe that should have made the decision. I mean, it's it's all very uh, odd and I'm being polite. I just, you're right about Roman Abramovich, you know, sort of top clubs have this sort of um, decision-making in place, don't they? They, they almost chess game it. They, they, they plan, right? If this happens, we're going to do this and we're going to go and do it. And then that's it. And we move on. Um, I am very surprised, to be honest, that, that, that this dilly-dallying is going on because, you kind of fell or, you, you know, sort of previous issue had shown that Sir Jim Ratcliffe was, yeah, you know, a, a ruthless sort of operator who knew what he wanted, how he wanted to, to execute it. And as I say, that would then occur. So it just suggests to me that they're not that keen on Ten Hag. They're not that keen on the people out, out there, the alternative. So it's like, well, you've ended up in this situation where whoever is the, the person going forward, at the start anyway, until we actually see some football, there's going to be a lot of question marks about what's happened, who's in place and why why it's sort of been meted out this way. Jamie, is there any possibility they're just waiting to see how the Euros pan out for Gareth Southgate? Yes, there's a massive possibility. This is the one thing actually I should have mentioned. There is a, a massive school of thought that they really like Gareth Southgate. Obviously, they can't get him now because, you know, the Euros about to start with England. But, um, you know, potentially Ten Hag stays in place um, and if he goes well at the start of the season, that's great. But if not, then, then there is Gareth Southgate um, sort, of, sort of there, depending on how, how he's gone with England or whether he's going to stay on. But again, it feels a little bit sort of, is that how you want to operate? You know, sort of, or let's let's see how another manager goes with, with a national team. And if, you know, if he's going to leave, maybe we can go to him. I don't know. It just seems, you know, that they might turn around. And this is the thing we need to hear from, really. They might turn around and sort of say, well, this is how we operate. We've got a plan in place. And, you know, j j just be patient. And I understand that, but you know, you go back to the, the transfers. It's difficult to, I would suggest, to recruit any players if you don't really know what's going on. Because surely that's the first thing they're going to ask: who's the manager? Um, and as I understand it, they've not been able to sort of say this to, to players, potential players, because they just don't know. Uh, brilliant, Jamie. Thank you very much thank indeed. You, Jamie. Talk sport breakfast, waking you up Monday to Friday morning from six a.m on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.